Welcome to Germany vs. USA. Today, we want to talk about false friends. Falsche Freunde, false friends. There are many words in German and English that look similar and you would think they have a similar meaning, but they actually don't. And that can lead to very, very funny misunderstandings. Beamer. 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 I love, that's our favorite one. Last year we were in San Francisco and with our colleague Brian and we were talking about a summer project in Germany. And so and Brian was like, you know, Alex, I think you should go ahead and buy, buy a Beamer on eBay for uh, the summer project. Yeah, in German eBay, yeah. In, in the German eBay. So, and I was like, Brian, I don't think I can, I can buy a Beamer. Why not? We, I mean, we're going to use it every day. Right. So, and I knew that a Beamer in American English means BMW. That's a car. So while Brian, Brian is American, you know, he said Beamer. I was thinking he wanted to buy, he wanted me to buy a car on eBay. And I just, you know, I just, I was like, <laughs> that's, a, I mean, that's a lot of money to invest, you know, just for like a summer project. I don't think we should do that. And Brian knew that a Beamer in German is actually an LCD projector. So he was talking about the Beamer all the time. I was talking about the car all the time. And after five minutes, I actually said, Brian, I, I, can't, buy a, I, I can't buy a car on eBay. I'm just not going to do it. And he's like, a car? <laughs> Why would you want to buy a car? I wish we'd bought a Beamer. Oh, that would have been fun. Be nice. But yeah, we, we did buy a projector though. <laughs> Big one. And I've done that mistake many, many months, even while living in the US. Handy. <laughs> I mean, Diet Coke in a can is pretty handy. It's pretty handy. Do we have the big handy there? Here's another handy. Uh, handy in German means a cell phone. And handy in American English actually means something is practical, easy, praktisch. Um, and yeah, there's, yeah, I remember talking about, you know, how, how I use my handy to call different people. <laughs> and they were just looking at me like, I don't know what, what, he, I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> I think, I don't know what they do in the UK. I think it's, I want to say it is handy. It's handy and too? I, I want to say it is. Um, I think they use mobile a lot, my mobile. I don't, they're on an island. The UK, they're on an island. I don't know what they do. Uh, the British people out there help us out. What's in the, what's in the UK? <laughs> so, so when Alex and I uh, first met, um, I'd always be telling stories about my roommates. And I had three or four different roommates at the time, just living in an old house. And so I'd always just be saying this and that, and Alex would always just look at me like I was insane. <laughs> I mean, Jim would mention, you know, like like five or six of his of his roommates, you know. And I was just thinking to me, I mean, I know the I know the word room and I know the word mate, and I just put it in my German brain together, and to me it was Zimmernachbar, which to me means you know you're living in the actual same room, like you know you share a room. So and you know after Jim had mentioned like five or six people, I was just like. I was terrified. I was there. I was like, college in the USA must be terrible. If you're living with like five different people in the same room, I couldn't take it. Yeah, and now just house, housemates, I guess would have been a better yeah. term. Or apartment mates, perhaps. Yeah. So roommate actually just means in German, WG Mitbewohner. It has nothing to do with the actual room. Right. Pepperoni. We talked uh, about that at pizza. Here's one that I really screwed up on. You know, pepperoni in American English, salami. Mm hmm. Uh, in German jalapeno, mm. and so that was that was a big mistake. I learned my lesson. Well, spicy, spicy, Sp spicy. We can talk about another one. <laughs> <laughs> um, German word uh, scharf. You can say like a girl is scharf. I mean, is scharf. Right, um, like she's hot. She's right. hot. Yeah, and uh, and you can literally <laughs> translate like scharf to spicy. I saw like a documentary on television. It was a German dude in like some kind of castle. Ghost hunters. Ghost hunters, actually, yeah. yeah. And he was talking about like a ghost, like a naked girl that appeared and he was like, and then she appeared there and she was all naked and spicy. <laughs> chef, German, English, no, but German, English. Uh, and, and <laughs> chef means in English, um, it, chef is the person who is standing in the kitchen in a restaurant, who's making food. And in Germany, the chef is the boss. Like of like anything, right? Yeah, like, you know, you could, yeah, like a manager, you know, like yeah, just the boss and uh, you can translate that. If you're talking that your chef told you to do certain <laughs> things, why would the kitchen guy tell him I can't do? Billion. Billion is confusing. It's... Right, because the English billion is actually the German milliarde. Right. Milliard. And then the, the English trillion is the, the German, German billion. Yeah, go figure. Yeah, that's not confusing. I had a hard time learning eventually. Eventually in English means 
schließlich, like finally, right? You know, some. I'll eventually do that. Yeah, you know, that means, you know, you know, I will do it, it might take some time, but it will happen. And I always mixed up eventually with the German word eventuell. And eventuell means maybe, possibly. So, you know, it's not sure if, if things happen or not. Um, and that's very confusing because if somebody said, yeah, I, I, I will eventually go there. It's like, yeah, do you go there or not? I don't... Right, you would say like, I'm, I might go there. Yeah, I might go there. Gymnasium? In gymnasium or gymnasium, I guess. Gymnasium. Hey, gymnasium, how y'all say it. Uh, to us, a gym, you know, is a place where you go and work out, maybe play some basketball, you like, know, just do something athletic. Right, sports. To y'all, it's high school. High school. <laughs> I would love to go to a German high school where all you did was play basketball but, and but unluckily, work out. That, that's unluckily not the case. Um, no, a German uh, gymnasium, gymnasium is, you know, the... It's the high school, you know, with different forms, the Hauptschule, the Gymnasium. Um, but yeah, that's the, <coughs> sorry, that's the um, gymnasium, school. Braveheart. Brave. Brave in, in, <laughs> in English means that somebody is, you know, strong and, you know, uh, what, what would you describe brave? Just courageous. Just oh, courageous is a good one. Yeah, yeah I, I was just thinking of like Germans who didn't know the word brave. Hard. Like, they see Mel Gibson in this yeah. outfit. <laughs> or like even like the American like home of the brave and uh -huh. like home hmm. of the, home the wholesome? Yes. Yeah. Home of the well behaved? <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> what? So brave in, in English means um, yeah, courageous, you know. Mutig zu Deutsch. Um, and in German, brav is you know, you're wholesome, you're well behaved, you're a good boy, good girl. That's what it means. So that's that's also easy to <laughs> yeah. So this one, this one really makes me laugh. Become and becoming. Mm -hmm. It's very funny to me when Germans mix this up. I'm not making fun of you in a bad way because you know my German's bad, but just when y'all mix it up, it's funny. Right. So becoming in German means to receive, to get something, and to become in English means um, etwas werden. Uh, etwas, yeah, it was werden actually. So when, you know, in German, many German brains, it's just like, okay, so becoming to receive, become to receive. So if you sit in a restaurant and, you know, like say, I become, I don't know, like a beefsteak. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the show on false friends. Hope you all learned something useful today. I'll take it easy. Auf Wiedersehen.